was was there was there punk rock in the air because it, it was punk rock was pretty underground in 1980 yeah i mean i you know i had different neighbors that you know that were into punk rock it was like um into you know like the dead kennedys and doa and and things like that and i just kind of you know we lived way out in in the suburbs i mean it, we were far out there's no record stores around so you know we um we just ended up you know I don't know, just whatever, you know, we had neighbors that ended up getting, you know, had older brothers and sisters that would have, you know, uh, get record, had record collections. There was a band from the Bay Area called Fang that, uh, they, you know, they ended up, um, you know, that, that was one of the first records I ever heard. So, and then um, we ended up, and then I don't know, when we got old enough and just figured out the the bus system, we just ended up busing <laughs> out to, uh, to Berkeley and, uh, you know, and, and we'd take Bard out there and, uh, just we didn't have any money, so we would just flip through the records all the time. So, huh. <laughs> so we learned a lot about just flipping or flipping through albums. Yeah. These have the best covers. Let's take these. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. no, I mean, people have access to everything now. Mm -hmm. You know, this, this is pre-internet. This is pre-being able to find anything you want mm -hmm. at all times. So you really had to, you had to go search out punk rock at the time. I mean, it, it, it seems like if you were going to start a band in the mid '80s. You know, you'd be playing Eddie, Eddie Van Halen and, and hair metal, and you didn't do that. Which, I like Eddie Van Halen. I like him too. He's a ripper. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, we just, I just got bored with listening to whatever was sort of on TV. I mean, because I definitely grew up like when, you know, MTV first started. That was, you know, you know, I was, I think I was nine or something like that when MTV first started. So, I mean, that was the first thing I ever saw, you know, I think it, like even seeing images of like Devo or something was, a, you know, wow, you know, or missing persons or something <laughs> like that, you know, it was, you know, that that's different, you know, it's not, you know, uh, ACDC or something like that. So I ended up, I don't know, it, it kind of just made me want to explore more. And so that's why I kind of ended up in, you know, Berkeley and uh, Telegraph Avenue and yeah. kind of. Was, was there a sense of community there then? I mean, you were... Was the Telegraph Avenue feel like, I don't know, anarchist mecca or something? Yeah, I mean there was all kinds of different freaks <laughs> and uh, weird th weird stuff that was going on. I mean there was anything from you know, um, you know, literally people that were you know mentally insane that were you know, you know, standing on these soap boxes and saying how you know Jesus Christ is going to come and take us all, you know, you have to, you know, be saved, you know, and then there would be the opposite of the, like, you know, the sort of, you know, it, almost, you know, Satan worshiping type people <laughs> that were like, you know, yelling the same thing and there would be homeless people everywhere and then there would be the punks that would sit up on uh, Sproul Plaza who were the scariest people, but, you know, because they are, you know, they, they would kick your ass and especially if you ended up showing up, if you were a, like a new punk guy or something like that, you know, and they saw like, you know, just rip the shirt right off your back, you know, they, they were mean, huh. cruel people. And of course you became one. Yeah, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but I was a nicer one, for sure. <laughs> was there, I mean, was it safety pins through the nose and that kind of stuff? You know, I, you know it, it wasn't really about sort of that necessarily. Um, there was, you know, there was all kinds of, of people. I mean, there was a guy like, um, you know, uh, you know, a guy Tim Armstrong who plays in Rancid was, uh, you know, he worked at, you know, he worked at Blondie's Pizza, you know, and he was like, a, you know, he was a strange guy. He just wasn't, he wasn't necessarily, you know, the typical punk rock thing. I mean, there's a lot of, you know, yeah, you know, a, a lot of things in Berkeley where it's like there's still that element of. Um, hippie culture in mm -hmm. a lot of ways so so there was you know there was the guys with the mohawks and the big hair and and you know leather jackets but there was a different element also like of people that were um, um, a lot smarter too hmm. tie-dye peace and love kind of thing uh, yeah <laughs> with the mohawk <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no not, not necessarily that but you know you just end up meeting like you know these people that you know that, you know, were involved in, in a different way, that were involved in, you know, uh, politics. Cre politics, creating a place like Gilman Street, creating a place like, you know, or, you know, having their own fanzines, 
wasn't necessarily just about, you know, I was more came from the musical side of it where um, these other people were, they were just as important and just as influential as, as far as the scene was concerned. It was like, you know, they were even, even more important in a lot of ways. You know, people that were just put out, you know, they would do cartoons and, you know, you know, there's one guy, recently I just read something where this guy did a cartoon of every single day of his life in like a year or something like that. So just sit there, you know. It's like today I listened to records and thought about some girl that doesn't want to date me. Yeah. You know? <laughs> so, Sounds like a punk rock song. Yeah. Sounds like a lot of punk uh, rock songs. I've written a lot of those, that's for sure. <laughs> when, when did you know you could sing? Um, I, I, I've been a singer since I was four. Um, I ended up, um, I don't know, I just ended I think, I don't know, my parents took me in for a piano lesson. And my dad was a jazz drummer too, so music was always throughout my, my house all the time. So, I don't know, I just ended up, I wanted to play, if I wanted to play guitar, I was four, but my hands weren't big enough. And so then, so they said start on piano, which, Sucked. I, I hated it. You know, I appreciate it now, but back then it was, uh, you know. So, um, and this woman noticed that I was singing along, and then she, um, she ended up. Uh, I ended up going to, um, I, you know, she just said, "Do you want to try singing at you know these different functions?" Like I would go to veterans hospitals and convalescent hospitals, and hmm. and you know children's hospitals, and just you know, it was you know it was a pretty. You know, it was a great experience for me. I mean, I would end up, you know, I would do songs like, um, oh, God, you know, like Broadway musical type songs, <laughs> you know. But, you know, if you can, uh, you know, imagine like a, a nine-year-old singing the song Satin Doll, you know, <laughs> which was really bizarre, you know, but a huge experience. I ended up learning a lot from it, so. Do tapes exist of this? Can we blackmail you? Uh, my, I think my, my, my mom might have a few VHS tapes around. So. Be nice to her. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, well, I mean, that probably, I mean, one of the things that made Green Day happen was you have melodies. Mm -hmm. I mean, do you think it came from doing that kind of thing? Um, yeah, I, I, I think so. You know, I mean, I just, I, you know, it's one of those things. It was the first, you know, my oldest memory that I have is, um, is you know, being play, making music and uh, and singing and and um, you know playing guitar. I started playing guitar when I was eight. So I mean, all that stuff was you know definitely carried over. I I didn't I I was embarrassed about being a singer. I didn't really talk about being a singer to my friends. You know, so you know I and I think you know we we tried to get like you know when we were playing the you know heavy metal or whatever, trying to find someone. I just wanted to play guitar. So we ended up trying to find other people that, that could sing, and uh, it was just impossible. <laughs> so I, you know, I don't know, I just, and I started getting into who's going do and, and the replacements and stuff like that. So I was like, ah, I'll, I'll sing now. So, yeah. yeah, no, it, uh, it's, it's, it's easier to find a guitarist than a singer. Yeah, guitarists are a dime a dozen, man. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, when you, um, do you, do you, when you write songs, do they come quickly? Are they like a bolt of lightning, or do you sit there sort of agonizing over each word? Um, they, it's all different. Um, you know, a song like, um, you know, I know songs like, you know, American Idiot or, you know, 2,000 Light Years Away or something like that. I mean, those songs came really fast. Really? Where, yeah. Like, you know, those, those sometimes songs just kind of write themselves, you know, or Waking Up When September Ends came really fast. Huh. Um, but a song like, you know, a lot, song like Longview, it seemed like that song just took forever to write. It was all because it was, you know, it started out with a drum beat, and then Mike wrote a bass line, which is a whole different story altogether about how Mike wrote that bass line. And then, well, tell us, tell us. Uh, um, oh, God. Uh, I, came, I came home from, uh, we all lived in the same house in Richmond, California, and... Uh, and I ended up coming home, which we were terrible tenants at the time. We, you know, we ended up chopping up the stairs for firewood. And, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so, so uh, it's a paradise. I know. 